everybody, this week's r and is brought to you by the Ultimate Game Night Bag. And hello everybody, I'm back! I'm back home! After almost half a year on the road, I am once again surrounded by my beautiful babies here in my little filming room with my microphone and my cameras and all that, and the Ultimate Game Night Bag, which is sponsoring this week's recap. And I just want to give you a quick tour of the basics. Uh, let's start with the outside. Uh, it's basically a standard size, so you could actually use it as overhead compartment luggage on a flight if you were flying with it, but it's got uh, lots of different ways to carry. You can hold it as a duffel. You've got the overhead to carry and keep all your games inside flat. Along the back, of course, it can be a uh, backpack with incredibly reflective stripes, by the way. These things really pop quite a bit. And I have to admit, I was kind of surprised when I first saw it that it includes cup holders on both sides, which is a nice touch. Haven't really seen that. But it's not so much for carrying your beverages, although that's nice. It's actually for carrying your game mats, because you can slot your game maps in here, strap them here, and they're not going anywhere. Very, very clever design there. Um, but then, of course, that's the outside. And man, folks, I got to tell you, this thing is sturdy. In fact, let me see. I think I've got a video of the uh, developers of it um, actually using a forklift to put this thing through its paces. Uh, they loaded it, overloaded it, um, and then drove around on bumpy roads to see if it could survive. And uh, if you want to see that and more stuff on the Kickstarter page, there's a link for it down in the show notes. Anyway, though, folks, that's the outside. The inside, as you might expect, is where you put your beautiful babies. Uh, lots of room for lots of games. Uh, you expect you know this one big central cavity, but there's some fun extra stuff as well. On the front, you've got space for, you know, tiny games. Have you tried this, folks? This is fantastic as an aside or, you know, writing utensils, whatever you might need. There's also another one on the top um, for even more games. Although, actually, I kind of like it for carrying a laptop or, a, you know, a tablet or other sorts of things. So anyway, this is a wonderful bag, incredibly sturdily made, a lot of flexibility and variety, and some cool new features as well. And it's going to be crowdfunding, folks, for a few more days. There's a link for the Kickstarter page down in the show notes if you'd like to learn more. And now, without any further ado, let's get on with the r and &R. And welcome, friends, to r and &R episode number 87. I'm Ruel, hanging out with Chris and Ray, as always. Thank you, Richard, for that uh, wonderful intro. The bag looks awesome. I, I need a new bag, and um, really Chris good. is celebrating. Looks fantastic. As always. <laughs> How the heck Pockets. are you, friends? I love pockets. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> pockets are always a good thing. Yes. No, um, this I that looks really great. I've always I for the longest time I was very on the fence about the whole board game backpack thing cuz they always look kind of in my opinion a lot of them look kind of dorky. Yeah. And they this do. one I like that we're finally trending towards like sleek not like it's a giant yeah. backpack, right? Like you're it's it's going to look like a giant backpack, but I like that we're coming up with like slightly sleeker, more modern looking designs and like that one is one I would I would actually use and I would carry around at a con. Yeah. You, we, when you said dorky, I was going to say, you know what hobby we're in, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but I was like, we don't need to like lean into it so heavily. You know, I really, I, I like the style of that one a lot, actually. Definitely, definitely. Um, so uh, thanks to Mayday Games for sponsoring this episode. Yeah. Um, and uh, welcome, friends. What we're doing is our top 12 travel games, because as you saw, Richard and Jen have been traveling for the last few months and they're back home yep. now. And we figured this is the perfect opportunity to talk about those games that we like to take on the road. So, um, we're going to start with, I believe, Chris, you've got our number 12. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, this is a game. Oh, oh yeah. I'm so, yeah. I'm so yes, sorry. Oh, yeah. Ray, go for it. <laughs> I was going to say, do we want to talk about like how we're describing, how we're defining travel games? Like we, oh, we yeah. typically like define our terms a little bit. At yeah. You're, I, I would if, love I for know. you to define it for no, us. Sure. I don't know if anyone, <laughs> I mean, like I can talk about what I was thinking, but I don't know if anyone had like. I don't know, thoughts on I think it. that's a, I think that is a great thing, and I will be kicking myself over not mentioning it first. And now you get all the glory. Yeah. And I would like to give you that glory like a Gowron the Klingon. A nice reference, Chris. <laughs> uh, <laughs> For glory. <laughs> For glory. Ray, why don't you... Uh, yeah, let, let's oh, uh, talk I about I wasn't this. trying to steal Chris's thunder. I was just no. going to say that 
Okay, well now I feel. Like... <laughs> I have I have no thunder to be stolen. Oh I, my god! I, All right, I, you keep it short. I was thinking for travel games, not just like a small box game mm-hmm. that you can take with you and then you can play, you know, wherever. I was thinking games that also kind of had a small footprint, so games that you could also play like while you're traveling. So games that in theory you could play on like an airport, like in a plane on that like little pull out uh, tray that they have or like, you know, in an airport while you're waiting, something that also has a relatively low footprint or, you know, something you could put in the one of those tiny pockets in a board game backpack, you know, something that doesn't need that big main compartment, but a little, little tiny one. Perfect. Um, that's all I was going to say. I, was I agree. Say. No, I think, I think I that's, a great, travel that's a games, great point. I feel like it could mean a couple different things. Yeah. And- uh, I think it is worth repeating that we have done this this list before. That's true. That's um, true. Ray has not, but myself, Ruel, and Richard. I mean, Richard will probably mention this as well. He he mm-hmm. he likes to shout those out. But we, yeah. I I wanted uh, my initial thoughts were just travel games, and that's what I did for the previous list. And then Ray brought that up, and I thought, okay, I'm going to try for that fo- small footprint. So mm-hmm. I'm saying, if you have three people, um, th- or one or two. Uh, that you're playing these games with on an in an airplane, I think these games can also hit fit. Maybe yeah. just barely on the airplane tray tables. That was yeah. also my yeah. goal. Uh, and I think it makes for a, an exciting list. Yeah. Well, yeah. did you add to the excitement with this? Or are you going to just let both myself and Ray down? Uh, I'm going to let you all down because <laughs> <laughs> I decided, uh, we, you know, like uh, Chris has said, we had done this list before in the past, and I wanted to choose some different games that I feel have sort of yeah. captured my uh, fancy uh, lately, and I feel like these are the games that I would travel with. Now, not necessarily small footprints, but because you travel with them, they do tend to be smaller anyways, uh, so mm-hmm. Uh, these are games that I'm thinking if I go on vacation with Michelle, these are the three or for my choices, three uh, games that I would throw in our backpack or really cool uh, board game bag um, on the plane and uh, go wherever and play these. So, yeah, now that that's taken care of, thank you, Ray. Uh-huh. And thank you, Fred, Chris, for setting that up. Um, Chris, let's lead things off with number 12. Well, my number 12 is Oath Swarm. Uh, no, no, it's, 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 it's just Frosthaven. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, they can fit in the bag. If it's just fitting in the bag, it's fitting in the bag. That's fine, right? <laughs> um, no, okay, my number 12, my number 12, our collective number 12 is a little game that uh, was back in 1988. Uh, it came out. It's a very small card game. It's sort of a speed game. Uh, it's a Mensa Selects game, and that is the game set. Uh, I, I, I think this game is awesome. It's a, it's a wicked game. For, for great people. If you're a good person, you'll like this game. Um, but but all you need is those 12 cards laid out in front of you. Because it's a speed game, you're trying to pattern match, basically. So very simple. You could do it on an airplane. You could do it on a single airplane tray table as well. Uh, and the goal of the game, as you're seeing on the screen, is uh, to create sets. Now, what is a set? A set is three cards, and each card has uh, something on it that has four different characteristics. There's a number. There is a shape, circle, squiggle, diamond. Uh, There is a color, red, purple, green, depending upon the printing, who knows what the colors are. Uh, And then there's a texture, I like to call it texture, uh, nothing kind of uh, shaped and uh, solid, like lines or solids, right? Uh, To create a set, you must pick three cards that for each one of those characteristics, they must either be all the same or all different. Now they don't all have to be the same, you can have all the same number and then a different texture, a different shape, a different um, color, right? And so knowing that, they just have to all match. There can't be only two of one and, and one of the other, right? So you're seeing a number of different sets that have been going by on the screen. Um, the back of the box shows shows different sets that you can create. Uh, and so if you look on the screen, it was just taken. Another thing was just taken. Now they deal out more cards. And as soon as three Three cards are taken. You deal out three more. The person who gets the most sets at the end of the game wins. To, to claim a set, you say set. That seems pretty easy. You just you say set. Uh, and then you point out the set, and people say, that's a real set, and you take it. And if it's not a real set, you have to give away like one of your sets, one of your points. Uh, it's great. It's It gets your brain thinking and like pattern matching in different ways. Super easy to play. And I was also being cognizant of this airplane thing because of timing. You don't want to be, stop a game halfway through. So mm-hmm. really, maybe this should be the one, my number one, because it's so versatile. Uh, you can you can pull it out. You can stop midway. Like it's one of those games where like, you know, it doesn't matter. You just want to play a little bit of it and you get the same taste of it regardless how long you play. That's set. Boom. Yeah. Number 12. 
Very Man, cool. I haven't thought about set in so long. This, Same. Like, that game's great. I feel like it's yeah. it's it's such an oldie but a goodie. You know, I never yeah. would have thought of set. I can't remember the last time I played set, but I love set. You know, like I, that's a game I played a lot yeah. uh, when I was younger, and it, it holds up really well. That's yeah. a great pick. It's uh, one of the first games when I got in the hobby uh, eight years ago, Chris. Yeah. It was one of the first games that someone had gifted to me. It's like, oh, you're in a board games. Here's this. I was like, I have mm. no idea what this is. But then I played I was like, oh, this is really cool. Surprisingly good. It's surprisingly mm-hmm. good. Now, here's the one problem I have with it, though, unfortunately. Uh, colorblind uh, accessibility. Oh, yeah. It is not you're, the most well, colorblind you, friendly you, game. And yeah, I realized then, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, wow, I have trouble seeing these colors. Oh, that's right. I am colorblind. And unfortunately, oh, are you? yeah, oh. so that's when it really, one of the games, this one and actually the original Splendor were the two games that mm-hmm. said, hey, Ruel, you have red, green color blindness. I was like, oh. So, but regardless, it's a fantastic game. Um, I, for what it was, for what it, for what it is, I think it's a, it's yeah. a great game. Totally. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on to our number 11. Uh, this one's my choice. And, uh, this is one of those games that I recently fell in love with. And, um, I don't know how available it is. I'm I'm not going to lie. I don't have a copy of it, but I played a bunch. uh, I played this a bunch of times over at Gamma Expo uh, a couple of months ago. This is a game. It's our collective number 11 called Pray Another Day. And, uh, Pray Another Day, folks. Uh, it's this fun little, um, game about animals uh, everyone's got a set of animals you can see here a bear a wolf a lynx an owl and a mouse we all have the exact same uh cards in our deck but we're going to play them at different times because you're going to play a card face down and then everyone's going to reveal simultaneously and then whoever has like say the bear or the in this case the wolf if you have the uh by yourself if you have the wolf and that's the only wolf played, then you're going to be able to prey on the other animals below that are below you in the food chain, like the lynx, mm. the owl, or mouse. However, like let's say uh, Chris and I or Ray and I play both play the bear, then they sort of like, oh, we're confused. There's two bears, so we're not going to prey on anyone. Cancels it out. It cancels it out, yeah. So you play this. Uh, you can get eliminated in a round, but the rounds go by really quickly. And at the end of the round... If you are the one that was able to prey on other animals, you'll get two victory points. Uh, if you just survive, you'll get one victory point. You play that until one player gets exactly five vic- or five victory points or more, and then they win the game. It's a super simple game, but the artwork is lovely. It's just it plays so quickly, and it's I don't know what it is. I just really surprised me about this game. I loved it, and um, shout out to uh, Sam over from. Um, Oh, gosh, what's the company's name? I forget the company's name. Uh, but uh, Sam works for a board game company of uh, um, a retailer up in um, Oregon, uh, Portland. And and he just he showed me this game. And I was like, well, I've never seen this. And we literally played like a dozen games, our whole little group there at Gamma X. Nice. It was wonderful. And uh, here's Mike Delisio from the Dice Star talking about it. <laughs> a lot of fun, folks. Um, and that's why it's our number 11 travel game. Because all it is is a deck of cards and some victory point counters. Pray another yeah. day. Yeah, I've I never like heard of this game. No, me really neither. Cute, no. Yeah, I've, I've yeah heard of games with a similar feel. I like that yeah. feel of bluffing your opponent, right? Like yeah, I anything mm-hmm. that lets me just say, "Oh no, I'm playing a bear. I'm playing a bear yep. every turn." Except I would never play a bear in any <laughs> yeah, in any game because famously bears have kidnapped my entire family and I'm still recovering from. Oh, it. I'm sorry to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's really insensitive. I, to you. I totally you? yeah, trauma would be pretty hard trauma. for me to win this game. Yeah. But, so, yeah. Um, this one apparently it's from uh, Pegasus Spiel. I believe it's. Um, mm-hmm. I think you can get it in the U.S. now, but. Um, yeah, really cool game. I, I like this type of thing, uh, Chris, where you know it's that whole trying to outthink your opponent um, in yeah. really simple ways. But it sort of reminds me of there's this game from way back in the day called Get Bit, and it's you're playing mm. numbers and you're trying to like not get bit by the shark. But if you're in the last play, like depending on what number you are, you're gonna you have little swimmers and you would swim mm. ahead. But if you all play the same number, then you don't swim at all, and then the shark yeah. bites the last person. Yeah, it has a, a, slimmer, a similar effect to that. But uh, number eleven, folks, pray another day. Let's go on to number ten, which is going to go to Ray. Nine. Ray 10. another day. Ray another Nine day. List. My number. Okay, my number ten. Uh, it's probably going to get me a smidgen of, of crap in the comments from people saying, that's not a board game. And to you, I say, broaden your mind, okay? Be more about <laughs> <Yeah. fun. laughs> nice. uh, yeah. <laughs> This is uh, Taco Cat Go Cheese Pizza. It is a very simple... That's not a board... Oh, oh shoot. I, I think... There it is. Open your mind. 
be more fun. <laughs> um, this is Tag Day Go Cheese Pizza by Dolphin Hat. It is a very simple slapping game where you're going to go around. Everyone's going to take turns flipping a card and saying the word, one of the words in the phrase, taco cat, go cheese pizza. So if I go first, I go taco and I flip over a card and the next person goes uh, cat and they flip over a card. If at any point the card that you flip over matches the thing that came out of your mouth, because obviously it's a deck of various cheeses and goats and tacos and cats. If it ever matches what you say, you have to slap the deck and you'll see that's in the gameplay. Everyone's slapping the deck and the person who is the last to slap has to take the stack of cards. There's a couple special cards like, you know, the, I think the gorilla you have to pound your chest and then <laughs> grab it. Uh, the what is it? The unicorn. You have to clap above your heads. It's really silly and funny. There's a bunch of different themes for like different holidays and stuff. Uh, the people who work in this game have been always really sweet and really cool. They have really great uh, social media marketing, which I just like as someone in that world, I am very fascinated in how they've gone about marketing this game. And the reason it's on this list, it is just a simple, fun slapping game, but it is literally when I have that little extra space in my bag, mm -hmm. I always grab this because it is a deck of cards. And I think it's some of the most fun you can get out of just a deck of cards. Right. And also yeah. when I think about travel games, if I'm like, tip, I'm typically the hoster in my game group. Like I have all the games, people come to my house, we spread out over the big game table. If I'm ever traveling somewhere and bringing games, I'm usually just like bringing some supplementary games, right? We're usually going to someone else's house that has the games, right? So when I'm thinking about travel games, a lot of the games on my list, on my personal list for this, are party games, are filler games, right? Because like, that's when I'm thinking about going somewhere and bringing games, I typically mm -hmm. end up reaching for party games. That's usually in the scenario in which I'm traveling, I'm just bringing some fun, silly filler party games and talking about go taco cat go cheese pizza jesus it's hard to say uh is truly <laughs> genuinely like the game i reach for the most but i'm like just stuffing that little extra corner of my bag because it's it's just a deck of cards yeah i just i just like that that you categorize as one of the best slapping games out there <laughs> you know <laughs> I own I've, several, okay? I've had some slapping games before in my time and it just it, it always <laughs> leaves me with just an imprint on the side of my face uh, I did not like playing them, so this sounds a little <laughs> bit nicer. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it can get painful if you're wearing rings and stuff. This can mm, get pretty, oh, yeah, can get pretty brutal. Yeah, I, I really enjoy this, uh, Ray. I'm glad you put yeah. this on the list. It's you know, you talk about travel. You know, if we if you really think about it, as we travel, we take these games. You don't know where you know you know where you're going to end up, but you don't always know who you're going to interact with. And games right. like these, like Taco Cat, Goat Cheese Beats, are so simple to learn and I think plays well with a really broad uh, audience. And, yeah. You know? Yeah. So like, that was that was definitely one of the things I was thinking of for these. Like there are some like two player specific games that I left off my list because I'm like, I'm thinking like I'm traveling. Yeah. I want to be able to like anyone yeah. that I meet on my travels, I want to be able to be like, hey, you want to play a game? And bring out a game I can teach in a few minutes. So. Nice. Uh, for sure. Yeah. Taco Cat, Goat Cheese Pizza. Great call. Or favorite. whatever version, because there's so many. There's yeah. so many. Yeah. I just, I, I recently got the, I think it was the Women's World Cup version, which was like. Oh, cool. Yeah. A friend of mine gifted to me. I was like, really cool. And so, you know, instead of the gorilla or whatever, oh, it's cool. got, you yeah. have to, you have to say goal or something. Oh, <laughs> cute. Yeah. My really favorite cute. version is I have the butts edition, which is the original deck of cards, but all the drawings are just turned around and it's their little, it's their little bums. It's like all nice. the original drawings, but just like from the back. I think it's like <laughs> Taco Cat Gochi's pizza on the flip side or something. Mm, and it's nice. like, they're all just backwards and I love think that's it really cute <laughs> very cute game okay let's move on to our number nine richard's got that for us take it away richard all right i love talking about travel games so much i think this is now the fourth time i have tackled this topic a decade ago and then last year we did one on a previous r and i have also separately done a uh, rv lifestyle games which is very travel adjacent and uh yeah i just spent a half a year on the road so i've got a lot of thoughts but i've got to limit myself, uh, which is why, folks, you always want to stick around for the post show. There's a link for the extended edition down in the show notes. We'll talk about a bunch more travel games. But first of all, I got to say, well, Ray, Chris, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard of Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza or Pray Another Day. I'm looking forward to seeing the show to hear more about them, though. I have heard of Set, never played it. I probably really should, though. Uh, but anyway, I am certain um, everybody has heard of number nine on the list and probably played it, too. What is it? It is So Clover. And this is fresh in my mind. There's Kimberly of Tabletop Tolson doing a great run-through demo of it. I got to play 
played this with my wife Jen for the first time on our road trip. Dan King, the Game Boy Geek, introduced it to us. And I have to admit, I'd always been interested in the game, but I'd never played it because officially it's a three-player minimum game. But here's the first thing about you need to know about Soul Clover, folks. It's a phenomenal two-player game, and it's absurd that it doesn't say that on the box. Just use the uh, code name uh, Duet or the code name Du. Is it code name Duet or code name Duels? The two-player code name rules for this works brilliantly. And honestly, I think it's a better two-player game, arguably, than Codenames. So what is it? Well, it's very Codenames adjacent. Uh, Players end up with a clover where they've got to come up with four clues for the way that uh, four cards get laid out. Then um, they hand it to the other players, and the other players try to figure out, right, what, um, what did Kitchen? Kitchen, Noodle, and Office? Well, yeah, that kind of makes sense. But what if it was noodle and mint? And mint should be over here with kitchen, because where else would you find mint except in the kitchen? And you're trying to figure this stuff out. It's absolutely brilliant. It's so much fun to play. Uh, It's a fun little video of Kimberly's to watch right here, and I highly recommend it. It's great to take on the road, uh, because sometimes you just need games for the uh, board game newbies that you run into. And anybody could be up and running with this game in no time. But then again, for me, it's extra important because when I'm traveling, I'm mostly just there to play games with Jen, and this is a phenomenal two-player experience. The box lies, folks. Thank you, Dan King, for making me aware of this. I've already gotten my own copy of it, which I will always travel with in the future. Number nine on our combined list, So Clover. That's so interesting. I I really enjoy So Clover, and I we might have had that on our uh, top party mm-hmm. games list before. I'm not sure, at least mm-hmm. an honorable mention. But as yeah, a two player game, it, I yeah, I wouldn't have thought it was a good two player game, but apparently it is. Me neither. Yeah, yeah. that's great. No. Yeah, it is a no. Clover game. It's very Clover. It's, it's very good. I I really enjoy that one. My my gripe with So Clover is that it's cooperative. I really, oh, yeah, that's, I, I yeah. homebrewed a little competitive version of it just because I'm like, well, but what if it was, oh, what if we fought? What if we weren't on the same team? How do you do it competitively? Oh, I don't remember. I have the, the I have speed? the rules written out somewhere yeah, um, that yeah. when I bring one, because my family is the same way too. So my mom and I sat down one day and we we're like, how can we make this not, <laughs> how can we make this not cooperative? Nice. Uh, you can I haven't played around it, while, it, right? But... Like as soon as you flip over the cards, everybody oh, yeah. has to write down. I think it's just and a like, team gameplay or something like mm, that. Yeah. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Nice. Um, but I, I love the, the concept of it. I just, I, yeah. I like my competitive party games. Totally fair. (laughs) Totally fair. Okay. Uh, Cool. So uh, that was our number nine. Let's move on to our number eight travel game. Back to Chris. Uh, My number eight, I really like this game in terms of talking about small box games, and I'm glad that I didn't include it on the previous travel list so that I had something to talk about now. Uh, This, this I think, could work on maybe three airplane tray tables. I don't know. You'd have to stretch it out. You got lucky and you got an empty middle seat or something. (laughs) Yeah, you might might have to be traveling with three people, but it works best as like three to four game. This is a a chunky game in a very small box. Uh, It's Masks. Um, And this is one of those games which is it's got such a small footprint that I don't find I pull it out that much because when I'm thinking about games to play, I, I don't look on my like small game shelf because I'm like, oh, that's a small game. Uh, and then when I look at the small game shelf, I think, oh, that's that game's too long and it's got too much, too <laughs> large an experience. And so like I I, I rarely, um, I haven't played this in a long time, but it's not going anywhere on my shelf because I think it's really solid. Uh, whenever I, I did a list of like underrated games, this was super high up. Um, basically you have all these cards that represent like the houses, the, the rooms of this hall. You're, you're in a grand hall and you belong to a noble Italian family. You have the green family or the blue family. They have actually Italian names, but you know, it doesn't matter. Um, but on, on, at the beginning of each round, you draft cards and you can be drafting your strong family members of your house or maybe you're drafting the strong family members of somebody else's house. And so you get access to everybody's cards and you, on your turn, you place down a card somewhere in between uh, a, a, a location and whoever's family member has the higher number will win that thing in the location. And so it's all about, okay, I want to get these things. If I get 
five of one type or four of one type, I win the game. Or if I get like two of all the types, I win the game. I forget the numbers, but uh, that's that's the gist of it. And so it's it's a really fun drafting of, okay, what do I do? Do I What do I play for? What can I win? What are other people going to go for? Uh, it, it, it's a really slick of what do I play? Uh, when do I play it? And you can also spend your money that you've gathered because sometimes you just win money instead of like items. You can spend that on uh, stuff in the middle these are like superpowers, one-time powers that you can take, uh, and uh, and and give you like swapping abilities and push things out one one way or the other. It's really solid, and um, yeah, it's a great little little small box game. Nice. I I've not heard of this one before, yeah. um, Chris. Th this is really uh, really cool. Um, do you know who publishes it or? Uh, I think it was FFG. FFG. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. So I think wow. FFG, and also strange because it's such a small box. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but FFG is on my copy. I don't know if they still publish it or not. Okay. Uh, but it maybe maybe somebody else got the license to it. But I think it's it's so surprising that it was FFG. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I just yeah, assume, yeah, it's, yeah, it's with like, FF, yeah, with FFG, they you know slap on some Star Wars or something on here, or Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings, and you know yeah. theme yeah. it. But it really it seems interesting. Uh, now, is it a? I'm trying to. Is it an area control thing where you're trying to get the most in one area and yeah, to grab kind that? Kind of. I mean, okay. you're each one of those rooms, those like little corridors, yeah. has an item in it. Yes. And whoever and you and you want to win those items, but you want to be strategic about which items you win when. Right. Mm. And try to get either. And there are multiple win conditions. So you can really steam ahead and try to go for one thing, but then people will try to block you or you can try to diversify. Mm. And so like that helps keep the pace of the game because you eventually somebody will hit that win condition. Got um, it. Cool. Yeah. So nice. it's it's like strategic placement, like tile, even yeah. like tile laying tile yeah. placement, but the rounds go back and forth. I love it. I love the drafting element to it. And that like you can have my most powerful family member and you decide where it goes and then it's timing out like okay well that's mm. that's gone there can i do something to push it over or do i have to take that thing and then pivot with what do i have in my hands so mm -hmm. oh i love that yeah. that's so cool that's wow cool. what a what a yeah, cool i've never game. heard of that before yeah okay yeah. Is, i oh sorry yeah, go oh go ahead, ahead. <laughs> uh, right go, go right ahead <laughs> i was just gonna say it's interesting that curse of the strategic small box games because like everyone has the small box corner of their calyx and it's 90% party games. So you're just like, that's the party game corner. And I yeah. I find myself hitting that trap all the time where I have a couple of small box strategic games that just don't get to the table as often because my eyes don't, yep. literally just don't go over yeah. to the small yeah. box section when I'm looking for a strategy. So I just thought that was interesting that you said that. But that's so yeah, true. no, game looks cool. I've never heard of it before. Yeah, I have yeah, to check that's that one really out. good. Nice. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Okay, uh, let's move on to our number seven. Thank you, Chris, for number eight. Uh, number seven is, oh, it's back to me. Uh, now this one, I sort of, uh, Ray sort of touched on this earlier about how when you travel, you want something to play with a bunch of different people or whatnot. Uh, this one, I'm bringing it back. This is a game that I would travel with Michelle and we're the only ones playing it. It's just for That's us. That's fair. That's totally fair. <laughs> you know? Well, you pick whatever games you want. You know, so uh, <laughs> this one's Splendor Duel. Um, I love, love, love this game. I think this is a masterpiece of design. Um, it takes Splendor, which I love, but makes it even better. Uh, changes, <coughs> excuse me, changes things up as far as uh, the, the gems that you're collecting, you can't just uh, select gems anymore. You have to go on the board. They're going to be available there. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to I'm going to take a quick break here. I've got a frog in my throat or something. Hold on. Well, we'll we, we'll we'll describe it to the to the viewers while you do that. Um, but what I like about Splendor Duel is that the fact that different than Splendor, there are three win conditions. You can be mm, going for points. Point. All the cards have points on them. Uh, all the cards also have crowns on them. Well, not all of them, but some of them do. Yeah. Uh, and you can get 10 crown points. Uh, and then the third win condition is something else. It's it's um it's a it's oh it's it's uh it's a certain number of points in one specific color that's what it is oh uh, yes you yeah, can yeah, just totally be right. totally and right. so it's a it's a less number of points and so i i really love that diversification uh, in addition yeah. the there is that limit of the gems uh like in regular splendor but the way that they're the way that they're put out is that they go yeah, back into spatial, the bag like, and yeah. they have to be pulled out again uh, and so you you, ha you have to draw you have to pick the gems in in a line, and so that exactly. that like really defines how you're gonna have this flow, uh, yeah. and and when you're gonna make your opponent refill it, uh, or versus you refilling it, because then everybody else gets a bonus. So it's a yeah. really nice take on Splendor. Awesome. Um, 
Thank you, Chris, for, yeah, the, t- as I, you know, cough up my lung here, I appreciate hey, you taking over. That's why there's three of us here. Yeah, right? we're here yeah. for each other. I appreciate you, too. Um, and as Chris said, that's what makes this game, in my opinion, really, really fantastic, is just those little al- added elements. Like, you play it, you're still playing Splendor. It is still Splendor. It's still got that light engine building thing uh, going with the gems and whatnot, but it does add those few elements that I think make it a better game uh, overall. And this is one that Michelle and I have actually traveled with uh, in the past, where we'll have in the bag and um it's a little tight on an airplane tray but you know at a cafe or whatever hotel room you're at it does fit perfectly for that so a uh, wonderful game i mean it's we still play regular splendor but if we have a choice we'll always pick uh splendor duel and that's why it's our number seven for our top 12 travel games yeah okay. we talked about it a little bit while you were you know you had your frog in your throat but yeah, yeah. we both we both love this game this game kills splendor for me i i yeah. vastly vastly prefer it to og splendor totally okay uh that was number seven and um i think my throat is okay so let's move on to number <laughs> six uh i'm gonna pass it over to ray oh is it me oh. is it you I, I think so yeah yeah it is yeah oh it is oh, me yeah. okay yeah. hi yeah sure uh, so this is a game that I, um, God, I think I briefly, briefly touched upon this in maybe a couple of other videos, but I don't think I've formally picked it for anything. And I think it really, really hits this category very well. And that is That's Not a Hat, which is still one of my favorite games that come out last year. Um, yeah. It's super simple. It is a, it is a, I, when I pitch it to people, I'm like, it's remember three cards, the game. That's literally all you're supposed to do. You're supposed to look at some cards in front of you and remember what they are. So basically you're going to take a card in front of you and it's going to be like a boot or something and you're going to flip it face down and you're going to pass it to the person um, depending on which arrow direction. There's arrows in the back of the cards that tell you which way to pass it, but you pass it to the, your left or right and you tell that person, hey, this is a boot. And they go, okay. And they either believe you or they don't believe you. And at the start of the game, you believe everyone because everyone starts with their cards face up. You turn them face down before you pass them, but eventually everyone's cards are going to be face down and you're going to have to remember where that boot is has traveled across the board and it's a it's a kind of bluffing style game where if you say something confidently enough that people know exists somewhere at the table like you know you don't know if yours is a boot but you know there's a boot at the table and you haven't heard anyone claim that their card is a boot in a while so you're like maybe i have the boot and if you say this is a boot with enough confidence you can kind of squeak through and one of my favorite things about this game is that all it takes is like one person to mess up, but mess up confidently for everyone to just be like, yeah, that's the boot, duh. And I love at the end of the game or when someone finally gets called on it, when you flip over a card and it's, it's not a boot. We all thought it was a boot this whole time. It's super simple. I love, I've talked about this a bunch on this channel before, but I love games that don't sound like games. You describe this game to someone and they go, huh? That doesn't sound good. That actively sounds really bad. Uh, That is what I thought when I was first taught that's not a hat. Uh, it's surprisingly good. And if you've been on the fence about it, I, I encourage you to give it a shot because it plays a lot more fun than it sounds. And it yeah. is just a deck of cards, which makes it perfect for this theme. I also have been throwing this in my purse recently when I go over to friends' houses. Uh, so yeah, that's that's not a hat. I I really, I, I'd like to thank you, Ray, for explaining it in a way that uh, me as a Canadian could understand. And now I really know what it's all about. <laughs> well done well done <laughs> nice chris i uh ray this game uh, like you it totally surprised me it came out of nowhere yeah. last year um and again it's one of those games eh, it sounds pleasant i again it's a nice activity no it, it's a hilarious game it's yeah. on my you know those meter i have that meter where it's like how loud does it get a game get and this mm. this is one of those games that is very loud and very funny um, always and that's a good my time. favorite kind of game too. Same, and same. I think that's one of the things, again, I, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but I love like the marketing side of my brain is always interested in like how games get popular. And this one's so interesting to me because, you know, it came out of nowhere. It didn't get a lot of like pre-release hype, but it got a lot of word of mouth because you're like, no, 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 you have to try it. You won't believe yeah. me until you try yep. it. Like that, yeah. everyone that I've talked to, they it's someone emphatically saying, no, you have to try it though. Yeah. Like that, and that has been very interesting from a marketing perspective to see. Yeah. Like, how do you create a game that gets good word of mouth buzz? Well, sometimes it's making a game that doesn't sound like a game, and people want to yeah. talk about it and convince you that it's actually yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, I, I enjoy it both as a player, but also as like a professional in the space, seeing how that game came out of nowhere and got really popular. Yeah. And I think that's definitely plays into it. 
Yeah, I think like the the example that uh, I think about from a few years ago was the game The Mind. When that hit, oh yes, again, all I heard was nothing yeah. but it was word of mouth, and people were like, "Is this a game?" Mm -hmm. Or it's like, "You got to try it." You know, it sounds really silly, or it doesn't doesn't sound like a game. But when I play, it's like, okay, now I see why. And of course, mm -hmm. I bought a copy, mm -hmm. and then I bought three other copies for friends, and just yeah. that's just yeah. the way it goes. Yeah, I certain games, games just hit you like just that. Have to try. Like, yeah, you mm -hmm. just it sounds like nothing. Yeah, and I know some people. Some people still are like they play the mind, and they go, "That was nothing," and yeah. that's valid. Yeah. But I like games where like you can't judge it by its cover you have to try it and actually see how it plays out and absolutely that's not a hat is definitely one of those for sure great choice yeah. okay let's move on to richard who's got our number five richard take it away all right continuing on chris ray you still stump me i have never played the hat game but i've heard about it didn't we put it on the party list recently yeah i'll get to play it someday but i'm sure it's not a very good two-player game and masks i don't even know about that one chris you've totally stumped me well done again i am very much looking forward to this episode uh to hear about all these new games that are new to me but well definitely splendor duel you really piqued my interest when you covered it on the channel playing with um, uh, Michelle I have to admit Splendor was a total damp squid went over like a lead balloon for me and Jen we did not like it at all but Splendor Duel looks like a very different game and for my money probably a much much better game but anyway uh, let's talk about now our combined number five on the list oh my gosh folks I am so excited to tell you about Inheritors here it is right here look at it it's such a tiny little box it's just a deck of cards but this game has so so much gameplay baked into it. Basically, well, you're going to be interested because this is effectively Reiner Knizia's, um Lost Cities on steroids. You know, imagine the core ideas of that game that, hey, I'm trying to play straights in front of me, um, but sometimes I have to give up cards from my hand to get other cards that I want, knowing that when I put them into the common discard pile, they might be exactly what you want. That Lost Cities formula works wonderfully here, but this game takes it so far above and beyond. Yeah, I've got cards I'm trying to play them in suits to get more points but if i set collect these cards and play them i can unlock secret quests that only I can chase after. If I reach certain levels of the straights that I'm trying to play, I can unlock cool special power characters. And every time you play, there's going to be a different combination of five of them that we are racing to be the first to be able to control that will change the game up. Also, when I'm giving up cards, I could either be uh, doing it to draw blind from the deck to try and find the cards I want, or if I give up cards that match... Um, there's three uh, discard piles. If I give up cards that match the cards in other piles, I can grab big chunks of cards and add them to my hand. Everything about this game is absolutely brilliant. It's from a new-to-me designer, Jeffrey CCH. I've been talking about him more and more, and I am blown away. So was Jen. Look at this. We get so much gameplay, uh, and it works great for two players, and you can play it at higher player counts, depending on who you meet on the road. It's pretty easy to teach, a little bit more on the complex scale than my last one, So Clover, but I am head over heels in love with our number five, Inheritors. Okay, Richard, you had me at Reiner Knizia's Lost Cities, but more complex. You've sold me. Mm -hmm. um, I had heard about this game. I remember there was a lot of hype of, uh, about Inheritors at the last Gen Con, and for whatever reason, just didn't grab me. But it's because no one mentioned the good doctor's name. You mentioned that doctor's name, and I'm all in. Chris, what do you think? I mean, I, it, it was it was startling as soon as that happened. Ruel got out of his chair and bolted towards the door, uh, heading up to the game store. Forgot that we were live streaming. Ray and I were screaming behind the I'm scenes. Waiting at him to come back. Ruel, please come back, come back. Oh, he got God. back just in time. But I mean, that's I think that's all you need to. That's all we really need to know about. Really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It exactly. Looks great. <laughs> yeah. Have, um, have y'all been able to play Inheritors yet? Um, I haven't. I have not. But I. I hadn't even heard of it. Yeah, I'm super excited to, to give it a go. Okay, thank you, Richard, for that. Uh, let's get back. Uh, continuing the list, that was our number five. We got number four, almost to the number top of the four. list, folks. Chris, this is yours. Well, I wish I could have a three a three peat here with games that uh, Richard doesn't shout at me about, <laughs> but I I hope he does for this one because um, I'm very passionate about this one. That that's that's the way to do it. I just need to. I don't I don't want to put myself up on a pedal stool here. But um, uh, you, that's that's what we got to do. Uh, you just pick games that he hasn't played, and then I don't get I don't get mm -hmm. um, I don't get yelled at. But I, I'm very excited for this pick. I'm very excited for this pick um, because this is the it re revolutionized my way to play this game. 
Th this game has an expansion in it, and the expansion is a must. It is the only way this becomes a travel game. This is Seven Wonders with the Leaders expansion. And I know what you're all thinking. This is the weirdest choice. However, however. How'd you gonna... know? That's exactly what I was thinking, Chris. <laughs> not even Seven Wonders Duel rule. Oh, it's not even not Duel. Even Wonders. It's Seven Wonders. not even Duel. It's base Seven Wonders. Wow. It is the real Seven Wonders. Um, this is Seven Wonders with the Leaders expansion because the Leaders box fits Seven Wonders and the Leaders expansion. Oh Does God. it really? The, the, yeah, the box of Seven Wonders is too big. It's too big. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's huge. It's, it's horrendous. Game is it, it doesn't earn its way on its shelf. It's been kicked out of my my collection multiple <gasps> times. Um, I kicked okay. it out, and then That's I had so to get hurtful. it back because because World Series of Board Gaming was was had it in the roster, and so I got it back. Uh, but <laughs> World Series was also using the Leaders expansion, and what I found is that you can put in all nine boards. All of the cards fit beautifully stacked together, and you can fit almost all the resources. You can cut some, but like you're not going to use all the resources anyway. Uh, by doing that, it fits into this beautiful, like very thin box that you can slip into any board game bag if you're looking to fill space. This also, <laughs> I think, could potentially fit on an airplane tray if everybody knows the game. You're tucking them in. Think about how they're stacks on stacks. You tuck you, them in. You give that a shot, Chris. I'm gonna. <laughs> I will. <laughs> you know what? Maybe Amazing. I'll take it. I'll take it in my bag to 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 Kublacon. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I I think you could do it. I, I think you might be pushing it, but I think you could do it almost on an airplane tray. But the fact that like it really, it, I'm I am so happy to own this game now versus like the monstrosity, the 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 amount of space it was taking up for the the sort of game it is. No, disgusting. Hey it but now that i have it as this small little thing it's a it's a really nice filler you know for people who people who know it they play it very well thumbs up for the filler games yes uh, and and it's it's just like it really like turned me full circle on seven wonders and i'm like so happy to have it. i'm like yeah i'll slip seven wonders in perfect if we get a couple extra people it plays seven like it's really nice to have that option but i would never take it with me if it didn't all fit into that box and i just think it's like it perfectly fits in so well that uh, it made me very excited i again threw out the main box again and just have that little perfectly slipped game and on the side wow awesome to pop into a into a into a bag would fit in that front pouch of the mayday bag very go. easily <laughs> uh and yeah i'm very passionate about this pick and i and i was so excited to make this my personal number one so i could i could revolutionize everybody else's <laughs> seven wonders games out there I gotta say, this is brilliant. This is this yeah. is actually this is like the coolest entry I think I've seen because Seven Wonders is like my favorite gateway game. I I love Seven Wonders. It's one of my favorite games to introduce people who have like maybe played Ticket to Ride, and I'm like, come with me. Seven Wonders is mm. like the game that I like to introduce people yeah. to the hobby with. It's one of my favorite games still. Uh, but that box, man, oh my oh, god, so, yeah. it's so frustrating. And I, yeah. but I'm I'm such a little collector. I'm like I don't because I know some people will take if it's mostly a card based game, they'll put them in like deck boxes or whatever and that that yeah. somehow feels like disrespectful to seven wonders and how much i love it like i think the box <laughs> is beautiful but like i'm not gonna take it i i actively don't take it to places i would take it right because it is a great game if we're in this sort of mindset of like okay we're traveling yeah. to like see a bunch of people or whatever there's few strategy games that are easy to teach but that fit a bunch of people but that actually are interactive you know not just a roll and write where you're doing your own thing like there's not a lot of games that are strategic that fit seven that you know, have a high level of interactivity that you want when you're going to like a big group thing. And I never bring yeah. seven wonders because the box is too big. And I get you a never do. You never do. It shifts around. That box doesn't have very yep. good yep. shake test uh, compatibility. Oh yeah, no, it's this, awful. This is actually genius. <laughs> I'm gonna 100 yeah. percent uh, be doing this with my copy because I do have the leaders expansion, and I never. Yeah literally never crossed my mind to try that so that's yeah genius i i have an elastic around mine just because mm -hmm. there's like a tiny little tiny bit of little... lid lift mm -hmm. like sure. you can get you can eliminate it if you shift things around in a way that like isn't nice so <laughs> i i don't i just keep the stacks nice, of cards yeah. um yeah. And, but um 
yeah, I, I I'm very happy. I'm I'm very That's happy so you cool. feel this way. That's Ray. such a good pick. Yeah, it's a game changer. It's a, it really is a game changer. It literally is. Yeah. Like I, my mind is blown away that you could do this mm-hmm. again. I'm thinking the same, exact same thing. I've got that Seven Wonders box. I do not have the Leaders expansion, but the way you've talked go about get it, it, yeah, I need to go get it. Like it's super super yeah. easy, super yeah. easy to incorporate in any game too. Like it's easy to teach. You yeah. just get that additional leader at the beginning of the of, of each round. Right. You draft four leaders at the start of the game, and you'll play three of them. One at the beginning of each round. Mm-hmm. Easy peasy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Love it. Love it. Okay. Great call, Chris. And again, I my mind is blown. Oh, man. Well, well done. Uh, let's yeah, move on to our uh, top three. Um, I'm going to kick things off with our number three list for top 12 travel games. Uh, this is another recent favorite of mine and Michelle's. We absolutely love this game. It's an easy game to travel with because the box is small. It is our friend Namalia. Um, this game really came out of nowhere for me. Um, I learned about it, I think, at PAX Unplugged a couple of years ago. And um, just based on the description from, um, I believe it was Brie at the time, she gave me the description. It was like cartographers scoring with some tile lane. And I was like, you had me right there. Tile lane, cartographers scoring, boom, I'm done. And it, it's it's a wonderful game. Um, it does take a little more space than, a, I, I think, an airplane train. It'd be a little bigger because you do build out a six by six by covering and, and whatnot. But the game itself is brilliant. Uh, every round you're drafting three cards into your hand, and uh, you'll see there that they have four different scoring conditions. The first three rounds, you're gonna score two different ones, depending on uh, what round you're on. Then the final two rounds, you're gonna score three uh, of those conditions, and there are variables, so uh, every game you're gonna have different scoring options, and they score basically on the terrain and the animals, and you're trying to line them up. Uh, you're gonna draft, place one, and then pass the others to the left or right, depending on what round it is. And hopefully you're going to get the right animals and right terrain where you want it. And it's the the brilliance about uh, of this game, as uh, other games like this, is there's always that choice of like, oh, I don't want to give this up, but I have to because I want this one a little more, or maybe maybe I I don't want this one, but I you know I've got to give it up. Um, I I always love that about games, and this one does scale really well. I like this at two, and I think it's up to five uh, is the um, a max player count, but it's. Always a good time, and that's why it's our number three travel game, Namalia. Yeah, I know you like this one. I still haven't yeah. have yet to play it, but mm. uh, I've been interested ever since it was brought up, uh, and a really nice pick. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm in the same boat. I've heard you talk about it, Rua. I've heard I've heard a lot of people kind of in the, like the Twitch streaming community seem to really like this one. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's because it's solo as well or something, but I just hear that crowd talk about it a lot, and I've yet to try it, but yeah. I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah, well, we'll have to get y'all uh, um, on board uh, real yeah. soon because it's it's a fantastic game. Um, but hey, we've got two left. Uh, Ray, you've got one of the two. We'll take it away. All right. So my hour number two uh, was my game of the year, I think, in 2022. This is Cat in the Box. I love trick taking. It's one of my favorite mechanics. And I got to a point where I finally was like, I don't feel like anyone's going to do anything new. Like after the crew came out and everyone loved the crew, I'm a hater because I don't like co-op games. So I was like, meh, I understand why people love the crew, but I would always rather play a competitive trick taking game. And then Cat in the Box came out. And this was like the first time in a while where I was like, okay, this is something really new and really interesting with trick taking. So basically it's a trick taking game. All right, wait, if you don't know trick taking, uh, I don't know how to concisely explain that mechanic, but basically you're playing a card, you have to follow suit. And if you have the highest uh, number in that suit, you win. And there's a trump suit where if you play a card from that suit, you win regardless. The cool thing about Cat in the Box, there's two cool things. One is that your hand of cards, there's supposed to be four colors, right? Red, blue, yellow, green, and numbers, I think one through nine, depending on the number of players. You get a hand of cards that have numbers on them, but no colors. So the theme of this, again, when I saw this box, I was like, meh, cats, very overdone, whatever. The theme of this actually makes a lot of sense. This is like Schrodinger's cat. This is like, you don't know what color the card is until you declare it. So you have a hand of black cards. And when you play your black two, you say, this is a red two. And you have decided that this is a red two. It's that sort of Schrodinger's cat concept, right? You don't know what color it is until it's out of the box. I don't know. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the idea there. You play the red two and then you, you you play it like a regular trick taker. Everyone else will look at their hand of cards and say, okay, well, this is a red four. And then you go until someone wins the trick. And there's a couple of cool things here. Obviously, the first is that you're just deciding what color your cards are, which is really cool. And that's a really fun layer of strategy. And the second thing is 
is that when you're hearing this idea, right, you're like, okay, well, why doesn't everyone just have a red two? Well, when you play a card and you decide it's the red two, you're going to take a little token in your color. And there's that little grid. You see that at the top of the screen right now on this playthrough video. And you're going to mark the red two, that the red two, it exists and you have played it. So no one else can say they have a red two again in the future, right? And so there's a mini game involved in that where there's also a little bit of a area control game going on. You're trying to get tokens on that board that like bunch together which is really cool. Um, and it's a nice, it's a, just a nice little extra mini game. It doesn't do anything wild and crazy, but it does influence what cards you're choosing to play. It doesn't just give you, okay, your card could be anything. You're trying to like bunch your tokens together. So you're kind of like pretending you have a bunch of yellow cards because you're trying to get a bunch of tokens in a row. And you go until someone paradoxes, which is where none of the hands in your ca uh, cards in your hand exist, right? They've all, they've all been marked. They already exist. So if I have a handful of if I have a two in my hand and all the twos have been marked off on that board, oops, I paradox because I can't have any twos because they all already exist. I feel like I'm explaining it this in a way that's <laughs> making it sound more complicated than it is. But at its core, it's a trick taking game where there are no suits. You decide what suits your cards are and there can only be one of each card. So chaos unfolds from there. This is a nice little compact box. It's super tiny. Um, and it's just a really clever uh, take on a trick-taking game. It, this is going against sort of my party game philosophy for these. This is a little bit crunchier. Um, if you don't know trick-taking, this can be a really hard teach. But if you know trick-taking, this is a really cool level up on that mechanic. And when I first played this game, it, it, it totally blew my mind. And again, I think it, it was my game of the year of, of 2022, the year it came out, Yeah. Uh, at least in the U.S. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I just adore this game. I think it's a, a great choice, especially if you are a trick-taking fan. I think this is like one of those yeah. must-play games. Like, you've got to give this a shot because it does such new things. Like, you know, the mini game that you explained, the, just that, like, area control, That's that sort of blew me away when I first played yeah. it. I was like, what the heck? This is this has it's nothing like to do with... Wait, it does about... sort of, like, it's influencing what I'm picking, but, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And that whole, like, oh, what is this going on? I, I really was impressed by this one. Uh, Trick-taking yeah. um, can be uh, a, a, can, can be hit and miss with me personally, but this one was sure. a big hit. Um, it, was, it was really, really well done. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I love trick-taking. I haven't played this yet. I think... Uh, and and you know what made me? Uh, I thought the description of it, like how it was marketed, I was like, that sounds dumb. <laughs> but now, but then actually, but actually, no, no, no. But how you describe oh. it, and like actually knowing the game mechanics, I yeah. think it sounds very exciting. But I yeah. think it was just like there are no suits. Good luck, and they don't yeah. explain that you get to call the suit, right? Right. Yeah, it's everybody not as talks about it as it yeah. sounds. It yeah. sounds yeah. like it should just fall apart at the seams, exactly. but because yeah. of the mini game and because of the fact that yeah. only one of every card can exist, and the mm -hmm. way that the like the the number of cards in the deck, it doesn't. It, yeah. Yes, it is like one of the more chaotic trick taking games because you look at your hand and you're like, it could be anything, but no, they no. give you kind of yeah. guide rails for yeah. it, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I just think, I think like for me, who somebody who really loves trick taking, they were like, everything's wild. I'm like, okay, oops. <laughs> yeah. Oops, all, oops, oops, all, all wild. wild. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Uh, but then I, but then I actually really read the rule book and I was like, oh no, this, this is a game that I, I will definitely enjoy when mm -hmm. I play it. Yeah. But that's it was really that sort of that thing where I was just like, nah. Reaction to the marketing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's yeah. just, again, from my perspective as a marketer, that's really interesting mm -hmm. that that was like, that turned you off to it. Yeah, um, yeah, I can yeah. definitely see how that's possible. And that was kind of my reaction at first. I I pretty much learned about the game and then played it back to back. So there wasn't right. much time for me to yeah. like percolate on that. But um yeah, no, this it's such an interesting again, I haven't seen something this unique with trick taking in a while. Um yeah. so yeah, I was really yeah really love this game. Great call. Okay. Uh and let's move back to Richard for our number one of all twelve, the number one uh travel game Take away, Richard. Okay, we're getting down to the wire. And finally, you folks deliver on things I can talk about. Chris, I have not heard what you have to say yet, but I'm assuming that you, like me, appreciate that Seven Wonders is a brilliant game. And at the end of the day, it's just a deck of cards and some pieces of cardboard and some tokens. Don't take the big gigantic box. Just um, you know, compact it all into some baggies, throw it into a backpack, and it's an incredibly portable game that will work wonderfully at all kinds of player counts, especially my favorite way of playing is at two players, but only if you play with the original rules that have since been excised from the record. But anyway, good choice. 
choice. Um, and Namalia Ruel, yeah, that didn't that make my top ten of the year? If not, it was on my short list. It's absolutely brilliant. Ray, cat in the box. I hear nothing but great things about it. I have to admit, I think I'm kind of over trick taking games. Uh, but if I were to play one, it would probably be this because it seems like such a really cool, interesting twist on the formula. But folks, you've waited this long. What's our number one? What's my new personal number one travel game? Well, again, I'm drawing from my experience, just having gotten back from six months on the road, and there was probably no greater success I had than um, I know it's a favorite of everybody's with good reason. It is Cascadia. Here's me and Jen literally playing it on the road. We're on our little um, dinette RV. You can see the back of Jen's head there in the picture in picture. Um, and I gotta say, folks, I would say bring along Cascadia with the Landmarks expansion, which is absolutely brilliant. And like I was just talking about with uh, Chris's choice for Seven Wonders, don't bring the box. Just bring the cards, uh, throw all of the tiles into a baggie, and um, and the game really compacts down, even with the expansion. And it's so brilliant. Jen and I had so much luck playing this game with so many people. It's just so instantly engaging. I mean, it deserved its spiel to Yaris win. And, um, you know, once you throw that Landmarks expansion, I would definitely bring the Landmarks expansion, which I think has only just now recently become available, where it adds extra depth and complexity to the game. Because now, not only do you score the animals with unique special powers, but you score the landscapes as well. Uh, Cascadia is one of the all-time greats. It just, every time I play it, it rises higher and higher and higher in my personal rankings. And like I said, I played it with family members. I played it with strangers. I played it with friends. Or I should say, Jen and I did. And we even played it when no one was around. Around while we were on the road. We loved it so much uh, that it was literally the first thing I thought of. It's now my new all-time greatest pick for uh, travel games. And like I said, folks, I've covered this topic at great length in the past. Uh, if you want to go check out my earlier um, travel-related um, countdowns, including an earlier r and &R, there'll be links for it down in the show notes. But more importantly, there's going to be links down in the show notes for the extended edition of this r and &R because we've got more travel games to talk about, folks. And I hope to see you over there, and I'll throw back to you guys now. Cascadia rules! All right. Yeah, Cascadia does rule. I absolutely love this game, a uh, favorite of mine from a couple of years ago. And I didn't really think about it as a travel game, but Richard's right. You just throw all the tiles in the bag and grab the cards, yeah. you're good to go. So, uh, great choice, Richard. I mean, yeah, I have to, I have to come in here, and Richard, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb, limb and agree with Richard, and agree with Richard's like off the beaten path pick. This is where Richard and I can bond. That and Keyflower. I think the two player rules of Seven Wonders, the original ones, also were were great. I, I think it's better than Seven Wonders Duel. What referring to what two player? What original two player rules? Wasn't it like a dummy you, player? It's just a dummy player. But yeah. you get you pass uh, you like pass control players. of the hand. Mm -hmm. You pass control of the hand back and forth. And so like you can set yeah. yourself up for the dummy player to need to buy resources from you in order to do something. And so you're like pushing the income back towards you. <laughs> I think it actually is good. I know it is almost like universally reviled and it was taken out of the second edition <laughs> um, because they wanted to take it off of the box. But Richard, you and I, baby, nice. this is this is the bridge. <laughs> this is we did it. That we came together. Yes, <laughs> it took a little traveling, but you have now uh, met. <laughs> and, oh my gosh, you're of one mind. Uh, Chris, Ray, thank you again uh, for hanging out and sharing our top 12 travel games. Folks, as Richard said, don't forget to click on the links below because we do have an extended edition where not only do we talk about more travel games, but we actually have some fun playing some Gartic uh, show with y'all. What is a Gartic show? You're going to have to click on that link to find out. It's a lot of fun. And until next time, folks, we'll see you here back on the R&R &R show. And take care. So long. Bye-bye.